So Oakland is one of the most remarkable cities that I've ever got a chance to experience in my life. And so if you missed our last video on Oakland, basically a cultural explosion, a lot of the most important figures and just everyday people coming together to let me know what Oakland was all about. You know, got to shoot around with the Oakland Warriors, man. Shout out to the Warriors organization. You know, one of the highlights, man, probably of my life so far. And just shout out to the whole city of Oakland. But in this video, um, I'm gonna be sharing a lot of what to do in Oakland. So what are the top activities to do? What are the top restaurants? And who are some of the most important figures within the local community within Oakland? New York, I learned a lot, but I never knew the game. I never learned the game. And when I went to Baltimore, I didn't learn the game. Nobody ever took the time to show me the game. When I got to Oakland, that's when I learned the game. That's when, so everything I do, you could give it to Oakland. Give all my, my Grammys and shit to Oakland. So talking about unique experiences. So as you heard in the beginning of the video, Pac literally credits the Bay, Oakland, for making him the man of the year. And I had a truly unique experience in Oakland because my guy Jit um, introduced me to his home. He's like, yo, I actually know uh, my homeboy lives in Pac's um, old apartment here in Oakland. I was like, I don't know about that. He's like, nah, literally we got like um, local OGs, the postman, um, documents and like basically court records saying this is Pac's old apartment. So we went over there and I was like, Yo, this is crazy. It was such a surreal moment. Nah, we actually in Pac's apartment. It's crazy. You know, I'm a big Pac fan, one of the most legendary rappers of all time. And then so my homie Jib, I was just talking. He was like, yo, you know this is the place that pretty much made Pac the city? I was like, I thought he was from LA. He's like, live and die in LA. <laughs> and then so, but let him know. Tupac lived many places, but the place that he claimed home, the city that made him, the city that taught him the game is Oakland. Um, so I'm here uh, in the greatness of Tupac and just basking in it. And I'm here with, with Dre. Dre, tell him about the story, about how you found out that this was Tupac's apartment. Um, my uh, ex at the time, uh, my lady at the time, she came and she told me that the mailman told her that he had the, the route for 30 years. So, you know, it was he say, she say still. So I kind of took it with a grain of salt. And then my neighbor, he asked me what, where I stayed and I told him 275. And he was like, okay, yeah, um, what letter though? So I said, H. He's like, you know you stay in Tupac apartment? I was like, yeah, you the second person that said that. So then one day, you know, just going on, this, just living my life, you know, another day happened and I have two Australians at my door. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty tight and quiet by myself. Tight and, you know, just quiet about myself. And so when somebody just come knocking on my door randomly, I don't tell everybody. So I look out through my peephole and I see two white dudes. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was shocking because I wasn't expecting them to look for me. And I opened the door and they were just looking like, yo, did you know that this is Tupac apartment? I was like, yeah, okay. I'm, do y'all want to come in? So I let them in. But you just left dudes off the street. I stayed by the door. I stayed by the door. I let him come and do a little pattern ramming. So this is what I was trying to show y'all uh, in the restaurant, but this is 90 seconds. But he basically gives up his entire address and everywhere where he lives at. Hey, turn this up. And one of the things um, about his homie, he's a barber. And so I was like, can I actually get my hair cut in your crib? And he was like, yo, why not put up a little tequila and have one of the most unique experiences um, of my life? I don't want to blow up his spot. And so I was like, yo, would you mind if I tell a few of my homies who watch the videos if they want to get their hair cut and have the same experience? He's like, yo, cool, I don't have much time. I can do it a few times a month. So I was like, all right, cool, I'm gonna let him know. So just so randoms don't start showing up, I'm not gonna put his address or anything. Hit this email address and then um, I said, $100, you get like an hour tour of Pac's apartment, get your hair cut, and maybe a shot of tequila. But I'm telling you, it was one of this, it's like, it felt like being a part of history. You know, Pac is one of the most legendary rap artists, not even rap artists, musicians in the world. So I just felt truly honored um, to be a part of that. Yeah, so I give all my love to Oakland. If I'm a claim somewhere, I'm a claim Oakland. Even if I don't live there, I live in LA now, but I'm gonna still claim Oakland. That's where it gave me the game.
So there's one spot that people talk about when they talk about Oakland. Lake Merritt is not to be missed. I literally asked like 20 different people and probably 15 out of the 20 said, you gotta hit Lake Merritt. And when I got there, I saw why. It's an oasis within the city. It's just so peaceful. It's so, and the serenity and the community comes together. It's just a really beautiful thing. And there's so many different things to do around the lake. They got food spots and on different days of the week, they have different things going on. And then um, I randomly ran up on this food truck, the Jell-O, uh, the Jell-O food truck. And I was like, man, I'm not doing I haven't had Jell-O fries in a minute. And yo, she did not disappoint. The founder was amazing, a beautiful smile. And then she's just with this new hip stuff too. They had vegans, gluten-free options. Um, just an amazing, it was finger looking good. JP behind the camera was literally licking his fingers. I highly recommend it. You will not regret it. Make sure you hit the Jell-O food truck. So another thing to do within Oakland um, is something I don't typically do in most cities, right? And that's a museum. The Oakland Museum is so fresh. And one thing that they really do well is they work with the community. And this is actually where um, I met my homie Taj. And so he is a, an executive with the Oakland Athletic, the Oakland A's baseball team. And then so he just showed me around and then he let me know they actually have all these cool events that they do um, within the city. And they have literally sometimes uh, tributes to like hip hop culture and to the Bay um, and then everything Oakland, right? Because they're like, this is Oakland Museum, not just one specific thing. And so from the beginning of time, you know, to now, and they switch it up on a regular basis. Like even um, when the uh, Golden State Warriors won their championship, they come, to, they came to celebrate there. And I was like, okay, this is more than just a regular music, uh, a museum. And I'm telling you, everything in there, the artwork was absolutely exquisite. So another thing that I normally don't do when I visit a city is go to zoos. But the Oakland Zoo, I heard so much about. And what separates them is because for me, I'm like. Why y'all taking these animals out their natural habitat? But what makes the Oakland Zoo so different is that they actually save animals and they, they truly care about these animals. So animals that would be put to sleep and all these other things, they actually save them and they have all of this amazing education that they put on um, at the Oakland Zoo. And you might be wondering who this beautiful young woman is rolling around with me. I don't think she really needs an introduction, but she is Kelly Edwards, almost like the real life Laura Croft. And so she is the first black woman to have a show on the Travel Channel. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hi, Kelly Edwards here. I'm a pilot, advanced open water diver, mountaineer, explorer, uh, the real life Laura Croft, Indiana Jones, uh, Bond girl. Uh, these are all things that have been referenced about me. I, you know, just say I'm Kelly Edwards. And then literally the first woman in like eight years to have a show on the Travel Channel. She was in town for a few days. So I was like, yo, come hang out with the Path for Heavy Boy. And so I, um, she obliged. And so anytime I get to spend time with Kelly, you know, the boy is smiling. And so make sure you check her out on the Travel Channel if you're not watching her show, The Mysterious Islands. So me, I love nightlife. I won't even deny it. <laughs> and so we were just walking around randomly downtown. And then we passed this spot called Canada. And I heard this live music. They were saucering. And I was like, man, I love it. There's just so many different cultures within Oakland. Like you have the Latin community, you have the Asian community, you have the white community, you have the black community. And that's why I keep saying the word community because everybody is welcome within the community. Just as long as you are respectful. Because there's a lot of new people coming into Oakland, right? The tech scene is changing Oakland in such a crazy way. And so one of the biggest things I heard, um, and when I spoke to people, the community leaders, they said, we welcome new people. But one thing is, don't come in here acting like this is your home only and trying to push other people out without having respect. So that's one of the biggest things that I heard. And that's so, anyway, I'll let some people talk about that a little bit later on in the video. And then talking about activities, there's so much to do um, in the city. And in the winter, they even have ice skating. I was rolling by um, in the lift and then, or the Uber, whatever you like better, just imagine me rolling by in that. And I saw ice skating, I was like, damn, we gotta come, you know, jump out, grab a few shots of this. And I was like, man, the city really does a lot to, you know, with the space that they have. Because I would say Oakland is not a overly activity kind of place where you're like, wow, I'm gonna go do the biggest and best attractions in Oakland. The biggest thing about Oakland is the people, the culture, right? The sauce, the flavor. That's what I really enjoy, the tech scene um, in Oakland. But they do the best to make what they have. California is known for its wine, right? You have Napa Valley. And so I could not come here without doing some wine tasting. 
And so we did an Airbnb experience. It was actually my first Airbnb experience because the only thing I really knew about Airbnb before is that you know you can rent home, and that's what I do. I literally have probably lived in more Airbnbs than 99% of the world. Um, most of my life I've spent sometimes eight months out of the year in an Airbnb. So this was my first Airbnb experience, and it was not to be forgotten. And so we went to Treasure Island. It's right between Oakland and San Francisco. The drive, uh, the view driving down is absolutely incredible. And so there was this guy and his wife um, put together this experience. They have their own distillery or their winery, uh, you know, place where they make wine. And what made this um, experience so unique is you taste it, you learn about it. And what's more fun is that you get to make your own bottle of wine and then you bottle it. And so you learn how to mix them with the whites, the reds. And so I learned um, a lot about it, but the most fun thing about the whole thing was literally drinking the wine. And let me let you know right now, um, it was so funny when everyone was there in the beginning, like people were like real chill. And then um, about an hour in, after like five glasses of wine, man, the conversations were just switching up to a whole new level, man. It was such an amazing experience. Highly, highly recommend doing that on Treasure Island. Um, just being able to buy your own wine and take it home, incredible. And then while talking about wine, there's another experience. So actually, in Oakland, there's uh, another space that we went, Dash Winery. And they have, they're a little bit more upscale, really prestigious, right? And so we went in there, the grounds were absolutely immaculate. Um, had a chance to run into the owner as well. And then I was accompanied by um, Julia Collins. If you don't know anything about Julia, um, I'll talk a little bit more about her later. Literally, black excellence, black unicorn within the tech world. Not even just a woman unicorn in the tech space has built a billion dollar company um, along with her partner, um, Zoom Pizza. But anyways, I'll talk more about that later. Let's talk more about the wine. Man, um, our man here was just cluing us up on all about wine. You know, because me, I'm not a big wine or, you know, a, I was about to say a foodie. I'm a big, I'll call it a wine. I'm making up new words, right? And so, just really educating on, you know, the grapes and the different things that, you know, change the texture, the taste of the wine. And it was really interesting because a lot of times, you know, you drink and you eat foods, but you have no idea on, you know, how they're created or what makes the changes. And so, I really loved it. And the passion behind the wines, you could feel it. Um, definitely recommend um, a wine tasting experience. And then, I can't wait. If you're watching, we're coming to do a Napa episode sometime in my lifetime. Reach out. I can't wait to go do Napa Valley and experience that, uh, you know, during the summer months. The youth is the future and we have to invest in them. I met this amazing group um, called Black Girls Code. And I've heard of it before, you know, through social media. And then I had a chance to meet some of the girls, really intelligent young women. Um, and I had a chance to sit down with Samaya and interview her. And I was like, wow, you're just so beyond your years. She was just talking about how she got into tech. Um, one of the things that I'll probably do in another video is a lot of these interviews, they were long, they were um, really in depth, but we don't have time to go into detail with them. And so I'll probably drop a few of them, just individual interviews on the channel. Um, so stay tuned for that. But um, and then after talking about her tech and what she's doing in tech, I was like, whoa. And I was like, how come you didn't go into anything like arts and stuff? So she's like, well, I do sing. Black Girls Code is an organization that is really, they're teaching girls to code. They're teaching them to be leaders. They're a really empowering program to be with. Um, they're teaching you all about STEM and how you can incorporate it in the world. and. Um, it's really the future, so when you teach us now, it can benefit us more when we're older. There'll come a time when you're old and you will wish you had shown love. For better or worse, through thick and thin, sisters or friends all your days. You can share love in your own way, show you care. I'm gonna adopt you. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually where I met Julia Collins. And she is on the board of Black Girls Code. And I love it when people, you know, basically make it in life and then they actually reach back to invest not only with their money, but with their time because they know the youth for the future. So big, big shout out to Julia Khan. And she even has a new project um, going on now. Like I said, she was with Zoom Pizza before. 
built that out. Um, truly a unicorn within the space. And now she's building out her new company, inspiring so many people. And she is one of those people where I say low follow count on social media, but big impact in the world. And that's a lot of people in the Silicon Valley. They're doing these huge things, but they don't need that, you know, that uh, notoriety, that thing. They just make things happen. Okay. to take advantage of new economic opportunities. My grandpa was the first black dentist in San Francisco. <laughs> Dr. Collins. Wow. But what, why is that important? Well, it, he was really the center of that community. If you were black or if you were Asian or Indian, right. you couldn't go to a white dentist. This was segregation. Wow. And so, wow. yeah, my grandpa was the guy who fixed everybody's teeth, but it also <laughs> meant that he was really popular. And the way that we attracted everybody to our family was through food. Yeah. Like at my house, there was no, let's sit down down at 6.30 p.m. and we'll set four places. It was come one, come all. You're always welcome. There's always something on the stove. If we don't have enough, we can stretch it out. So the reason why I'm a food entrepreneur is because my understanding of what it means to feel love, what it means to feel human, what it feels to, means to feel connected is always rooted around sharing food. And so while I was also in Oakland, I had a chance to visit East Oakland. And Re everyone told me you have to go see my friend Regina Jackson. She's doing amazing work. And so I went over to her facility and I was blown away by the things that they were doing and the kind of activities, the kind of youth leaders, and also how much the community is involved. And then she was just telling me all the different literally legends that have come through her organization. Um, she didn't start it, but she's been the CEO for like over 30 years. And you can tell when you're in there with the kids, they respect her because she's in there putting the time and she truly cares. I um, mean, she was just telling me, yo, I reached out to Gary Payton. Gary Payton, um, you know, was a product of here. And she's like, I need a new basketball. He's caught. And she said, say no, he said, say less, no more, done. Didn't even have to think about it. And she said, that's the kind of people, when they leave Oakland, they come back and invest in their community. They don't even ask for the press or anything. So, I mean, shout out to the Glove for, you know, doing that. And there's so many other people, they're talking about the Warriors organization and so many other individuals within the community. So if you want to get involved, if you're in the Oakland community, you don't even have to have money come commit your time just ask what can you do to help within the community and you know they're open have a strong focus on character character leadership because we recognize if you're gonna run around stealing other people's stuff then you are not likely to succeed you're gonna get in your own way right um, and so the after-school leadership is part of a whole continuum of education we have middle school programs high school programs um, programs that support our college students so much so that they typically graduate in four years. We have 86% that graduate in four years. Wow. In about a week and a half, we'll have our college mentoring program, which really showcases that cascading mentoring. So the kids that are in graduate school are pouring into the ones in college or pouring into the ones in high school. So it creates a stronger brotherhood that I'm not just gonna succeed. All my brothers and sisters have to succeed, right? So let's talk about more dope people. So we got my man, Chris Lyons, and my homie Lance. And so they invited me to the studios, the Zoo Labs. And I was like, yo, this is a real studio. <laughs> studio. <laughs> studio. And I've never been in a studio like this before. Shout out to, you know, the big bro, Dwayne Wiggins. Um, he invited me to his studio. And then he's more on that classic um, kind of vibe. This was like one of those crazy new high-tech studios. And it's actually a non-profit. And so they invite kids who are looking to improve on their arts. And I was just like, wow, y'all do all this? And then you come and invest your time back here? And they're like, yeah. And so if you don't know anything about Chris, Chris is what I would call an inspiration to so many people. Um, and he's also one of these people I'd call low follow count, big impact. So if you ask Diddy if they know who Chris is, you ask Kevin Durant, if you ask um, Quincy Jones, you ask a lot of the biggest names in the world if they know who Chris is, they would say yes because he's the one leading like their um, investment fund. And so, you know, we want, we, our mission is to really help advance more, you know, African Americans in, in diverse backgrounds in the technology. And we want to do it in really the coolest way possible. You know, showing people that it is, it's, uh, this is a great industry, it's a great space. Uh, you know, you can work hard, you can, you can build new things. And, and so, that is the kind of man, this is young man, and he's also 
really crazy talented in music. And I was just sitting, I was like, man, you really multi-talented. And so we just connected on a, on, you know, on a level and we, you know, continue to connect and Lance. Also, it depends on who you ask. Um, I asked him that question. I was like, depending on um, who I ask, how do people know you? And this is what he told me. I mean, what, what do people here in Oakland know you for? That's like a complicated question, right? Like, it depends on where you run into me, I guess. Um, you know, I've done digital strategy in the music business for some of the biggest artists in the world. Uh, so in the music business, a lot of people know me as like the digital strategy guy, for like Common or, you know, g Easy or any of these people. Um, but then there's a flip side where like, I have a music career, where like I've gone on tour, done like 100 cities and all Damn. that. Um, but then here at Zoo Labs, people know me as a mentor. So it's yeah. just like, context is everything, I guess. And then I can't go through this video without mentioning the homie Matt. So Matt works for YouTube, um, you know, does so many amazing things over there. And so I'm just like, man, so inspiring because a lot of these companies are seen by the world as like global leaders and then they work for these companies and it's not easy to get into these companies. You really have to be doing something right. But the crazy thing is Matt also throws some of the biggest events in the world. He does them all over the world. He has a brand called The Toasted Life. And what makes his um, events unique is he brings together, I would call like, young professionals right doing amazing things in the world that are you know they're on that similar kind of uh mind wave a little bit more upscale and it was like my favorite event that i attended while being in oakland i was blessed that he was throwing that event while i was there um just beautiful people probably some of the most beautiful women i saw in oakland i was like man let me behave while i'm in here and like i said he's done them all over the world so big shout out to matt um really appreciate you and what you're doing um around the world mr most requested in the streets um i put a post out on social media and i said i'm coming to oakland who do i need to get in this video and the number one requested person was Mr. Fab. And it was easy to see why from the moment that I met him and the way people talk about him, because he does things for the community, not for the vision, right? He's not out here doing it for the clout. Like he's out here in the street, really messing with the community and such a positive individual. And when I rolled up with him, he's like, he, like you know, he just showed that love from the beginning. He's like, yo, Mr. Passport Happy. So I was like, oh damn, you see the video showing love. And one of the things is he's an international traveler himself. And he was just telling me about his time in London and all these other places that he's been. And so I just had to take the time to show respect to this man. And then we, you know, we went around his store, showed me around a little game, little gaming in the back. And he's truly a community figure. If you come to Oakland and you want to get the real, real, make sure you reach out. So it doesn't matter who you are. If you, and then make sure you stop by his shop. <laughs> Make sure you stop by his shop, the dope era. He got some dope stuff in there. People kill a culture. Like, man, I'm not, I wouldn't move. I wouldn't move to, uh, oh, that hurt. Your boy. <laughs> I wouldn't move to London and say, man, we ain't drinking tea. Anybody drinking tea, call the police on them. You're like, oh, wait, this is part of our culture. Like, what are you talking This is huge for us. Like, what are you talking about? And, I think that's what's happening, man, like with gentrification, with things like that. People are coming here and they're making what has made this city amazing, what has made this city historical, what has made, and they're trying to take that away. They like, like they had this lady called Barbecue Becky and Barbecue Becky called the police on one of the gatherings at the lake. And it was actually, she called it on my brother. She was, she was like, she went viral. Well, that was, that was. Yeah, that's him right here. That's it right here. So they called it on him to, and like, and it was just crazy. It was like, you you calling the police because we barbecuing and having fun at the lake? We ain't bothering nobody. We just bringing people. I can see if cats are shooting, selling drugs, or doing something like that. We barbecuing. And stuff like that, like, you feel that entitled to where you could come to a city and you could just start changing things? Like, you could just feel like, oh, well, y'all shouldn't be hanging out here anyway. Like, come on, cut it out. Like, respect the culture, man, respect the culture. So I think that's the most disrespectful thing that is happening. But other than that, man, the vibe of us just having a city of people that, that love to come here and, and what's going on, um, I'm enjoying it, man, because I'm seeing a lot of, 
more success from people that I can recognize, people that I know, people that's from the city, you get a chance to say, damn, I'm doing some good things. You know what I'm saying? Some hometown heroes, some hometown kids is doing some good things. So I'm seeing that, a lot of that, man. I'm enjoying that for real. And let me rewind real quick. And so when I was back in London in September of 2018, um, I spoke at this event called Audacity Festival put on by Evita Robinson. And this was an event all about black travelers from around the world. So Kelly was there, even my business partner, Tiffany the Budgetista. Just an amazing event. And that was at Jack London Square. And I ran into this beautiful young woman called Julie, and she worked for Airbnb. And the more that I spoke to her, I was like, wow, you're an incredible individual. And she ended up being the first black lawyer at Airbnb. I was like, what? Like, first black lawyer at Airbnb? That's incredible. And so I had to take the time to sit down with her and learn a little bit more um, about her story. And because, you know, Airbnb has had some issues, right, with, um, you know, racial discrimination. And so she was just sharing why she's there and the things that she's doing to impact the community and, you know, educate people and just make um, Airbnb more culturally aware of some of the things that are happening. And so, and we also did one of the most epic things that you could probably do. So just basically normalizing um, black excellence where it's not a, it's not a thing of like, oh. It's not an like, anomaly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that's like the, basically like, that's like one of my biggest missions in life. And that's like the first videos I started creating on YouTube um, and everything. So that's, that's from my side, but I like yeah. to highlight. No. I think the the other the other piece to that is I think most people think you have to come from affluence mm -hmm. in order to access those things and like that's not my story at yeah. all you know it's super and I and I don't even have the like Nigerian American experience that's like you know my parents came here became doctors mm -hmm. you know and then we were middle class it was like no my parents came here you know my dad tried to work a job that ended up being a violation of his student visa yeah. and he was deported when I was a child so I had a very rough upbringing it wasn't like your typical Nigerian American but I was still able to do okay for myself yeah. you know what does it mean for you to be like the first lawyer but not even that but just the first black woman lawyer at Airbnb like that's so inspirational just to kind of see like I mean just being a lawyer in general but then at like one of you know the biggest and most powerful up-and-coming companies yeah hold that thought hold that thought <laughs> Maybe for a shot right now then. Uh, okay, go, go for it. Let's do like a couple of minutes of it and we'll hold the thought. Wow! That was good, man. Thank you. This is the story in tech. But there aren't a lot of black people in tech. So I think our team wanted to be more intentional and like I'm not the only one. I'm, there's now like five of us, you know, and I'm like, I'm so excited about that. Um, and that's been in 18 months. Wow. Um, and we, we've had more and more diverse um, candidates come in. Not, be, not, not candidates, but now people who are part of our team. And not because our team is like, let's purposely like try to go out here and get like a rainbow of people. But like, there are a rainbow of people who are talented, who can be committed and who understand the complex legal issues that we're dealing with. And so when you're talking about remarkable women, um, you gotta bring up Kiera. So she works for Twitter and she was just sharing all of the amazing things that she does for Twitter. And um, she invited us to the Twitter like headquarters. I was like, wow, this place is amazing. And she was sharing a lot of things um, that she does for Twitter and within the community. And one of the biggest misconceptions about Silicon Valley um, and just the tech community in general is that you have to be an engineer and so she shared a little bit about that and, you know, those misconceptions. Uh, I've always focused on this diversity in tech space. It, it's something that is, I'm passionate about. Um, and it's that idea that you don't have to have a technical background or you don't have to be not a person of color to be able to come here, get a job and do well. Um, you don't need to know someone to get a referral. You know, that whole, like those, all of those 
misconceptions of how to get into a tech company. And then so after touring around the, the Twitter offices, taking a look around, um, it's always been a dream for me and so I'm always humbled when I get to visit any of the tech um, giants uh, headquarters. And so after that, um, we went over to go get some Ethiopian food at this dope spot. It's, 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 So while I'm talking about this spot, let me actually tell you about a few other places where you can enjoy some food. One of my favorite foods in the world is definitely Mexican. And so I had to hit a couple spots up and the first one that we hit up was Aguavi Upton. And this place, um, the interior is beautiful. And um, the food, the chef actually came out and explained each dish, um, really, really incredible. Not over hyping it, um, easily one of the best Mexican spots in town in a good location. So many different foods, so many different spices. They come out with some of the custom hot sauce. So then I'm telling you, there's no shortage when you talk about excellent restaurants in Oakland. It's one of the things that really stand out in the city. And so we went over to Cooper and Spoon. As soon as I walked in, I was like, I can see the vibe. Beautiful people, beautiful ambience. And then the food matched. Everybody was just raving about the food. And then I have my homie, uh, Luol Dang, um, who plays for the Minnesota Timberwolves. But that's not how most people know him. The legend from here in my city in Chicago. If you're from Chicago, you know my homie Luol Dang. And so we just came over. And then what we chopped it up about was, you know, about investments. And we're talking about investing in Africa and then how we can really bring Africa to the world because a lot of people have all these misconceptions about Africa. And this, my brother right here, truly, truly cares about home. And then we've got so many dope projects coming up, you know, filming back home. And then he's one of these people that is just low key, but he puts his money where his mouth is and truly investing in the things that matter. So shout out to my brother, Lou. And like I said, and at the end of the dinner, um, owner actually came over and um, said a few words and her story was so inspiring. And she was sharing with me how she, her restaurant started as a food truck. People were loving it. And then she came together with the right person who believed in her vision, invested, and that's how this beautiful place came about. So I just love supporting businesses that start from the bottom and really make something because the food, and then, um, you know, she's out there, you know, bopping floors with her employees, you know, and so I really appreciated her um, to the fullest. Make sure you check that spot out. Oakland has no shortage of Mexican food. And so we rode to this other spot, Again, the food was incredible. The ambient, yo, the margaritas in this place deserve an award. And then we linked up with our Stay Woke Woman or Woke Oakland. Uh, such a fun group. Uh, we just, we, we had the most random conversations this night at dinner. The food were good, the drinks were good. I think the drinks brought out conversations we didn't know that we were gonna have. And so, I can't say enough about it. Um, definitely, definitely recommend visiting um, when you're there. And so I saved the best for last. Lake Chalet. Oh my days. This place, you want to impress a girl? This is where you take her. Lake Chalet is immaculate. When you walk in, you're like, ooh, I know what time it is. This is that place where if your parents are coming into town, you're taking a date out, you just want to have a nice meal, this is where you go. You know, the craft cocktails, it's right on the lake, the views, um, the food was excellent. It was really, the food lives up to the way this place looks. Because a lot of times places look good, but then the food's not here. The food, amazing. And shout out to my brother, Dwayne, you won't see him in the footage here, but he was actually the first person that took us um, to Lake Chalet and um, told us all about the place. And so while I was here, um, you know, Julie came and joined along. And so while I was doing her interview, um, we went out and we did the gondola ride. And this is the most romantic thing that you could ever do. I was like, yo, Julie, we about to fall in love. I know we just doing an interview now. <laughs> and uh, but shout out to Julie, um, just an amazing, dope individual. And that right there, I was like, whoa, am I in like Italy right now? I, I cannot tell you how much that was worth the money. Like, worth every single penny. Shout out to my man. You have an amazing voice. I hope you see this video. If you see him, tag him. He was truly 
remarkable and gave me an experience that I will never forget. And so one of the most uh, interesting and amazing events that I had a chance to participate in was um, the 100 Black Man Gala. And then I know Facebook was a big backer in this project. My homie Dwayne Wiggins um, invited me here. And this was just what black excellence was all about. Um, such a beautiful event. And then, and man, the women were looking fantastic. <coughs> Ladies, holla at the boy. Nah, I'm playing. I'm married now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And then I can't end this video without talking about one of the most influential people in the city, Mr. Marketing King. So when you look at all the marketing campaigns behind Marshawn Lynch um, and so many other influential people um, within the city and then also the country, this man is behind it. He's got his spices, he's got the barbershops throughout the city, and um, he literally, and he's also in the real estate game. And so we just had a, he's literally a serial entrepreneur. I'm a, you know, I'm a serial entrepreneur, so downtown Oakland was my stomping grounds. Um, but working for Marshawn Lynch and Shamar Moore and Guapale and Too Short and Fab and, you know what I mean? So this company we call Marketing Kings, you know, we're one of the premier boutique marketing agencies. And then we went over to, took me over to Beast Mode, um, obviously, um, and then his cousin is Marshawn um, Lynch uh, from the Oakland Raiders. You know, both of them, you know, grew up within the community, so they are figures, and they really do a lot for the community. And so it was just so good to hear all this positivity and people doing amazing things within the community. But anyways, that's enough for Oakland this time. I can't tell you how much I love this city, um, what y'all doing in tech, what y'all doing within the community, and the people within the community. I can't thank you enough for being so inviting, um, so inviting, so welcoming. And I'm at the end of this video, I can't even get my words right. But anyways, if you see me out in them Oakland streets, say what up, man. Oh, before I go, shout out to my homie Cadillac Bob out there in East Oakland, man. Thank you for uh, making it happen. Uh, we were literally, he got this um, shop out there in East Oakland that fixes up, you know, low riders. Um, and basically, if you need your car detail, Cadillac Bob, man. <laughs> shout out to my guy, man. Can't, can't end the video without giving you that shout out. And thank you um, to the uh, city of Oakland. Visit Oakland for inviting us and having us and helping facilitate a lot of the things that we did. And anyone that helped make this project a reality, I want to give you the biggest thank you and um, I can't wait to see you around the community. Thank you and take care. So one of the top requests I keep getting is, Jabril, I want to connect with other dope passport heavy members around the world. How can I do that? Or Jabril, how do you pay six grand a month for that Airbnb when I see it listed as 18 grand? What are all the details? Or Jabril, what's up with the passport heavy merch? Or so much more. So you're gonna see a link right here. Go to this website and then opt in for the email list. And I'm gonna send you all the important updates and then how to actually connect with other passport heavy members and so much more. Anyways, enjoy and we'll see you on the list.